thank you so much archana uh, i would take that part of being a friend as a very uh, blessed uh, fact uh, almost everyone here uh, i would say are blessings and it's very pertinent to the topic that we are talking about women and mental health and i think we being with each other is a big part of our mental health so thank you everyone for being Absolutely. here uh, for this particular uh, panel to talk about women and mental health and as a first disclaimer i would like to say that it's It's a very vast and distracting topic. As soon as you get into women and mental health, so many channels open, so many things come up, and you feel helpless. You feel that you're not enough to deal with this topic. You're not able. You will never be able to find it in uh, in a focused manner to talk about it in twenty minutes. But what I have tried to do is I have tried to take try to take the key key uh, words of the topic. one is health and in particular mental health what are we going to talk about should we or should we not differentiate women from men when it comes to mental health there are a uh, very two beautiful concepts that i found when i was studying for this topic called alpha and beta bias we'll go ahead to uh, hear about them what is the importance of mental health particularly in women we have been talking about all that but in one slide uh, i will just complete the loop with that and what can we do about it right now so coming to what is health we know who definition of well being mental social psychological spiritual financial economical and all that in 2009 an addition was done as uh, this was this was uh, the who basic uh, definition was for a, a basal state and then it was added that it is an ability of a body i would like to add here because we're talking about mental health body and mind to adopt to new threats and infirmity we have seen this in a huge manner during covid times our ability to adopt was the something that uh, made us thrive or otherwise and then came a uh, very two important focal concerns regarding health and specifically mental health that is realization of the fullest potential of self and then doing or fulfilling the one's role and expectations in family community and other settings which we are part of now this is definitely a huge um, um, plethora of terms plethora of elements that we are supposed to take and when it comes to fulfillment of one's role i think the expectations and a role that a woman is expected to play is huge and all of us know we are a woman is expected to look beautiful talk kindly be polite be smart earn money equally productive in industry and finance give birth breastfeed take care of infants and kids take care of kitchen and household and then be happy about it i mean uh, that is what i would say a mental health of a woman would be about keeping all those things in mind and still have a smiling face still be happy about everything that you are doing uh, in your personal as well as uh, a community level when i take about all this to mental health then i try to see what can uh, we how can we channelize these uh, important elements that come up under the plethora of terms uh, of women and mental health so it's very difficult when it's come to mental health to remove the culture or social influences because the mental health is clearly strongly influenced by the uh, surrounding or the environment that defines it a proper mental health at one place may not mean a uh, normal mental health at other at the same time uh, a particular behavior in one culture or society may mean differently in other culture and society but as valiant has uh, said that common sense should prevail and we should find out some elements that are universally important to mental health of a, an individual as well as the community so what are these two universally important components or elements of mental health they are cognition and emotion and i think there uh, i thought uh, we come to a narrow point of understanding how we can uh, concentrate on mental health in women and at these two levels i think we need to uh, think about one is cognition another is emotional second point uh, of uh, the new definition of mental health a very wonderful article that that says what exactly is mental health earlier because the definition of health means that you should be at the peak of your uh, capacity 
and you should have the you should achieve the highest potential that you have and play your role in the society that means that uh, you have to be uh, good always or positive always when it comes to mental well being a purely positive approach at all the time is not possible people in good mental health are often sad unwell angry for uh, some moments and sometimes the uh, positive uh, emotions like happiness can make one lazy and something like sadness or setback can actually lead to motivation so when they're talking about mental health it is not always a very positive thing like we have in uh, physical health we want all the parameters to be in the right phase we will not accept something which is out of the a parameter but in mental health uh, these things need to be understood these things need to be accepted and then uh, a person's role needs to be um, planned or uh, uh, implemented and that is why it's important to understand what is mental health so till now we have seen what is health and what would um, coarsely uh, help us to understand what mental health would be coming to the first universal point that is important that is cognition the second is emotion that we'll see later so as long as cognition is con considered the recent studies in last couple of years or i would say last 5 years it is found that the structural and cognitive aspects of brain and wiring of the brain that is neurotransmission is not much different in men and women so the part that come under cognition Uh, are um, your uh, logical intelligence analysis memory these are not very different between men and women so the cognition is almost similar being a woman doesn't change that aspect of your mental ability or mental health but when it comes to emotion there is difference because uh, this is not something that is hypothet hypothetical philosophical or i would say it is not something that is hilarious that nowadays goes on uh, as jokes or as uh, taunts or whatever um, but we are going to talk about the real science and physiological and psychological theories about gender so this is where we need to make the gender uh, as a specific point and what i spoke about was alpha bias and beta bias what does it mean uh, in al alpha bias is present in the theories that are gender gender sensitive that means they consider men and women as different and opposite specifically the uh, freudian view point says that the male anatomy and masculinity from the physical point of view is most desire and a cherishable goal and female anatomy and femininity are seen as deviation from normalcy in this case though they are being gender sensitive they are putting one gender above the other and the other gender is considered as a deviation while in beta bias beta bias Uh, the theories are gender neutral they do not differentiate between men and women the differences are ignored both of them are considered equal and this is seen more in humanistic and existential theory now both of these are biases alpha bias is even though gender sensitive it is considering one gender better than the other whereas beta bias considers both equal but they are biologically not equal so the care required will be different so in reality ideally we need to understand the differences understand the similarities do a specific job at the right place and overcome both the biases when it comes to health specifically the mental health so what we have seen is cognition is similar in men and women but when it comes to emotion there is a different wiring of the neurotransmitter this the emotion happens at a three uh, step level one is subjective experience second is physiological response and third is a behavioral response now subjective experience and behavioral responses are extremely culture based social based and community based for example if there is a bag how a woman and a man will perceive that bag as a subjective experience will be different in different societies behavioral response will also depend on how the the uh, children either uh, girls or boys are raised up and how they are taught to behave but what is gender specific or biologically specific is physiological response and this is where the neurotransmitters make a difference and we will see how because there are huge number of receptors which are sensitive to estrogen progesterone and androgen all over the mind 
specifically the emo areas which are uh, related to emotions that is hippocampus amygdala and prefrontal cortex and the interacting neurotransmitter systems these are the systems that regulate affection mood and sometimes cognition that participate in response to the treatment so the gonadal hormones are uh, seen to be strongly interrelated with those of the hippocampus hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis also in bidirectional manner that is estrogen enhances whereas testosterone reduces corticosterone corticosterone release from the adrenal glands while in an another manner corticosterone levels during a prolonged stress or chronic stress can reduce gonadal hormones thus affecting reproductive social emotional as well as cognitive functions now i am going to take one aspect of being woman and correlate it to hormones the whole thing uh, is out of scope of 20 minutes talk but we are going to talk about a very important uh, event or aspect of women's life that is menstruation we all have learned this diagram in our undergraduate postgraduate days that this is a cycle or or, or plot of a hormonal response during the menstruation in the first uh, phase first 14 days we have estradiol and the next 14 days that is luteal phase we have higher progesterone to estrogen ratio estrogen is higher in the first phase of menstrual cycle and there is a very strong correlation of estrogen connected to increase in the serotonin and the number of serotonin receptors in brain so when in harmony estrogen is strongly linked to modifying the production and effects of dopamine as well as endorphins which encourages emotions of happiness and motivation while progesterone has a very close relationship with gaba neurons and as well as glutamate which are strongly linked to feelings of calmness and contentment and this is where the emotional response uh, of of the physiological level differs between uh, estrogen and progesterone and this happens every month uh, in a woman's life uh, every 14 days cycle if it is regular the things happen regularly in women where menstruation is irregular this is a real chaos testosterone also has a very strong impact on serotonin as well as dopamine but because we're talking about women now i am not discussing what is the effect of testosterone on these things exactly um, when these things are imbalanced as i said the happiness and motivation along with estrogen may not happen the way it is expected to happen biologically similarly the calmness and contentment that comes with progesterone also will be disturbed if the um, if if the reproductive either if the reproductive uh, aspect is disturbed like polycystic ovarian syndrome irregular menstruation or the mental aspect or the uh, emotional aspects is uh, disturbed like premenstrual syndrome or postmenopausal state or for that matter postnatal depression so these are this is just a gist of uh, what happens Uh, which is very specific and scientifically connected to the menstrual uh, hormones and the emotional neuroparameters coming to the role of gender in mental illnesses there is a very different demarcation between the uh, prevalence of mens- uh, mental illnesses to the gender like symptoms of depression anxiety unspecified psychological distress are two to three times more common among women whereas addiction substance use and psychopathic personality disorders are more common among men now the same article also um, highlights that the symptoms of mental illnesses are more internalizing in women and more externalizing in men and that is why many a times the diagnosis of uh, diseases that are more common in men is very clear and uh, is easily diagnosed uh, easily diagnosed while those symptoms are more internal in women and diagnosis might be difficult and that is why even the diagnosis as well as care might be biased because of the gender there are certain women specific mental illnesses premenstrual syndrome postnatal depression and postmenopausal syndrome these are um, we will not go into details of these things but what hi- what uh, is here to highlight is that there are women specific uh, biological events happening like menstruation pregnancy lactation and menopause that are very strongly related to incidence of mental illnesses now 
it's not only the mental illness that is uh, affecting the gender specific challenges but also effect of metabolic illnesses during these uh, events of women's life that also contribute to the uh, morbid morbidity like hormonal basis for alteration in metabolic control we know post menopause is something that that can uh, definitely influence the metabolic control nowadays studies are coming up which say that even menstrual cycle uh, can influence the uh, metabolic control of young patients with type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes for that matter safety of medications during pregnancy and lactation is a very important point because now we have women in their 25 and 30 years of age coming up with diabetes and when we uh, form their treatment we need to consider that one day these these girls are going to uh, conceive and the safety of medication is very important and uh, as the Uh, the biological events change in women's life the life priorities also change and that also need to be considered when we uh, we treat these patients and find it difficult to manage them then these are the uh, pointers that we need to consider which are not often spoken to with the patient as well as not even often considered by the clinicians in the clinic coming to again few of the studies that suggest that there is a very strong clinical significance of serum sex hormones one of the studies suggested that postmenopausal women with vestibular migraine there is a very potential role of lack of estrogen in these women the dash diet studies follow up showed that the sleep mental health and hormonal changes are very strongly interrelated to each other and um, the dash diet uh, causing 5 to 10% of weight loss is shown to improve sleep pattern is shown to improve the mental health parameters uh, as well as their uh, reproductive hormone levels uh with 5 to 10% of weight loss at many places it is mentioned that we don't know very clearly what is this what is the uh, direct relationship of uh, uh gender specific hormone towards the mental health so everywhere it's said that there needs to be more research there needs to be more research there needs to be more research but the research till now is is uh, alpha biased it is uh, it is very strongly done from the freudian a view point where most basic researches or animal researches are done using male animals they do not choose female animals because there there is a distinct secretion pattern of estrogen and progesterone which they they say that will affect the metabolic parameters that they are studying clearly there is a paradox because against using the female hormone itself is a very strong indicator that it has a very important role and if uh, this this particular aspect is kept away from the research and the uh, the end line is that we do not have much of the data so importance of mental health of women we have talked about this throughout this panel because it's not only about that women particularly but she has a very larger role to play in the biological existence where she is going to conceive she is going to uh, give birth she is going to nurture the child in her womb for 9 months she is going to breast feed the child so her health particularly mental health has a very strong impact on not only her health but the health of the future generations to come so what can be done we need to remove the alpha as well as beta bias there was a very famous quote on twitter going on uh, by uh, uh, sadguru saying once gender is of consequence only in certain private spaces like bedroom and bathroom and everywhere else uh, it should not even matter but i think there is a third place where uh, this matters a lot a gender matters a lot and that is in clinics that is why we need to have gender specific guidelines i'm sure usha ma'am is going to take us through this topic in detail we need to have gender specific research not excluding women from the research uh, because the research might get biased we need to know what that bias is we need to know how the hormones affect the metabolic uh, parameters and all other mm, mental and neurotransmitter parameters gender specific clinical approach to physical and mental health when a person is sitting in front of the clinician the uh, the gender of the person must be considered before forming the treatment plan and gender non specific cultural professional and financial approaches which we uh, will leave because it's out of scope of this there are certain biological privileges given to women and its mental health our pregnancy childbirth and raising another human being so we don't have to always talk about illness we can also talk about the privileges that we have coming to the summary of this very vast and distracting topic we understood that there is a concept of mental health 
and the definition of mental health is evolving like nothing uh, there is a difference between men and women but not in the cognition but more from the emotional point of view and the differences in the um, reproductive hormones is going to change the emotional response importance of mental health is very uh, high in terms of women's own health and the future generations health and what we, what we can do about it the whole with that i would like to stop my presentation and we'll take the questions at the end